YouTube, YouTube. Peace and blessings to you this great Tuesday afternoon. This is Tuesday, July the 17th, 2018. And our lesson today is the goat, the, the lamb, lamb, and, and the, the lion. lion. In that order. The goat, goat the lamb, lamb, and the, the lion. lion. Let's go ahead and dig deep into this thing, Brother Messenger, because I'm excited about this lesson today. Man, I am too, brother. You know, after I got baptized, I just told God, work with me. You know, come on, now. give me your Holy Spirit, Father God. Work yeah. with me, work with me, work with me. And I'm praying that He does just that. It's interesting how when God is inspiring me to do these lessons, Brother Messenger, I feel a certain sensation in, in, inside of my, my back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's crazy, y'all, when, when, I'm, when I'm, you know, coming up and preparing for the lesson and, and finding these scriptures. It's like I can feel like a discomfort inside of me. Mm. And that's as God is my witness, you know. So when I start feeling like that, I know that I'm on to something. Absolutely. But again, I got to give all praise and due to God for giving me and giving Brother Messenger the things that he has given us, this inspiration, this spirit, this obedience to get into his word and do his word, brothers and sisters, and try our best to live it out. Absolutely. Try our best to live it out. And, and, and let's just make that clear. The key word is try. We are trying to. So please don't think because I always say this. Don't think because we sitting on this side, we got it all together. No, we still trying to live the best Christ-like life we could live. That's right. So we're going to go ahead and start this thing off now. The journey that it took to get from the goat to the lion is truly a phenomenal story, brothers and sisters. In this lesson, we will follow this journey and show you what this means for you and I. Mm. And our salvation. salvation. Come on. Call it a love story, if you will. But this is truly a lesson that leads to the understanding of our salvation. Yes. Let us go back to the beginning, brothers and sisters. Let us go back to the beginning, Genesis 1 and 1. Here we read about the creation of two estates, brothers and sisters. Again, the, the, the creation of two estates, heaven and earth. Let's go ahead and read it, brother messenger. Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We're going to stop right there because what happened after God created the heaven and the earth? Very few people delve into what happened after God created the heaven and the earth. They just go straight to, and the earth, earth was, without was without form, form and void. void. They go straight there, but we're not going to go straight there. We're going to deal with some of the things that happened after God created the heaven and the earth. So in order for us to find that out, Let's go back or forward to John 1 and 1. Mm. Let's go to John 1 and 1. Okay. Here we read about the Godhead. Yes. And who was there in the beginning? Come on. When the heaven and the earth was created. Those two estates, heaven and earth. Yes. Let's read it. Who was there in the beginning when the heaven and the earth was created? John 1 and 1. <clears throat> in the beginning was the word. Well, hold on. Wait a minute. The Word was there in the beginning? That's what it said. The Word is the Son of God, God, right? Yes. Okay, read that again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. So we got two. We got Father, and, and we got Son. Son. We got the Word, and we got God. Continue. And the Word was God. So the Word is called God, and the Father, Father is, is called God. God. There is no Holy Ghost right here, brothers and sisters. There is no Holy Spirit right here, brothers and sisters, because he, the one that bare records Record. in heaven with the Father and the Son, was not there in the beginning. No. I'm going to say that again. The one that bears record with the Father and the Son, the one called the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. was not there in the beginning when the heaven and the earth was created. created. But let's go ahead and... Um, Go to Revelations, Brother Messenger. Mm. Already, huh? Already. Already. We're going to find out what happened in the beginning by going to the end. 
Let's go to the book of Revelation. Say that again. We're going to find out what happened in the beginning by going, going to, to the, the end. end. Mm. God knows our ending in the beginning. Wow. <laughs> Revelation is the 12th chapter. Now, before man was created, there were living things that occupied the earth. Yes. I'm going to say that again. Before Adam was created, before man was created, there were living beings that occupied the earth. The Bible does not call whatever was here man. He, the Bible don't call it that. These, these living beings that were here before Adam, the Bible doesn't call it man because Adam is the first man. Mm -hmm. But whatever was here, was destroyed by a flood, brothers and sisters. We're not talking about the flood of Noah. Right. But whatever was here was destroyed by a flood due to the sin that Satan brought to this earth. He eventually defiled God's creation, leading him to start over again with Adam, the first man. But let's read a little bit about what happened after God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 12, 1 through 9. I'm, I'm sorry, Revelations. Revelations 12, 1 through 9. Go ahead, my brother. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Now let me just stop right there. The woman that was clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. That the sun... Is Jacob. Mm -hmm. The moon is his wife, brothers and sisters. And upon her head was a crown of 12 stars. Those 12 stars are the 12 tribes of the children of Israel or the 12 sons, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Continue at verse 2, Revelation 12 and 2. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. These are the nations and the kings, brothers and sisters. This is end time prophecy. But now let's go back to the beginning after God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 4, Revelation 12, 12 and 4. Listen. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. These are the angels that fell down with him that he convinced to be on his side. A third part of the stars of heaven. Go ahead. And did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered. For to devour her child as soon as it was born. Mm. And she brought forth the man child. So Israel, brothers and sisters, brought forth a man child. The man child came through. Israel, brothers and sisters, go ahead. Who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God. That they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Now we're jumping back into future prophecy, brothers and sisters, where it's talking about the great tribulation period, which lasts for three and a half yeah. years. But let's go back to the beginning, brother messenger. You see how it's going in yeah. and out of time. Um, the, to the past, from the past to the future. The past to the future. But let's go back to the past and find out what happened after God created the heaven and the earth. Go ahead. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil. So, brothers and sisters, that snake that you say was in the Garden of Eden, that serpent, read that again because that serpent or that snake has a name, brothers and sisters, that was a being in the Garden of Eden with Adam and with Eve, a being, a fallen angel. He was given the adjective of a snake because of his subtlety, brothers and sisters. But read that again, verse 9, all of the titles of the devil, brothers and sisters, go ahead, or Satan. And the great dragon was cast out. Uh-huh. That old serpent. That old serpent. Called the devil and Satan, 
which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels was cast out with him. So, brothers and sisters, all this took place after Genesis it's 1 right and 1. one. Angels were created to occupy the estate of heaven. Living beings were created to occupy the estate of earth. There was war in heaven. Satan and his angels got kicked out of heaven, came down to this earth, and defiled whatever was here on this earth. Absolutely. And after he defiled what was here on this earth, then what happened, Brother Messenger? Let's go to the second verse in Genesis. Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. And the earth was without form and void. Now you know how the earth became without form and void. Because my God, everything he created was good. Mm -hmm. And it was complete. Yes. So he didn't create the earth without form and void. The earth became without form and void after Satan and his angels got kicked out of heaven down to the estate of called earth. Read that again. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. See, the waters, brothers and sisters. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. He destroyed what was here with the flood, brothers and sisters. Yes. And we're going to prove that for you even more in detail. Just hang on, because I know a lot of you all say, well, black guys ain't never heard that before. We ain't never been taught that before. Well, we're going to show you the proof in this book, brothers and sisters, how God destroyed whatever living beings was here before Adam was created. And he did it with a flood, brothers and sisters. But let's read more about what happened after the heaven and the earth was created. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah, the fourth chapter. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, brothers and sisters. Jeremiah, the fourth chapter. Now, the Lord, through the mouth of Jeremiah, also spoke about the beginnings before Adam. Mm. This is a crucial piece of evidence in our case today about the scapegoat, the lamb, and the lion. Come on. The goat, the, the lamb, lamb, and, and the, the lion. lion. Let's, let's read it. Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, verses 23 through 27. Go ahead, my brother. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void. Didn't we just read that in Genesis, that the earth was without form and void? Well, what are we doing reading the Genesis story in the book of Jeremiah? Brothers and sisters. You got to look all over this book for the answer because it's not just in one, one place. <laughs> and just because you at the end of the book don't mean that it's not talking about the beginning of the book. Go ahead. I beheld. I beheld the earth and lo, it was without form and void and the heavens and they had no light. I beheld the mountains and lo, they trembled and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of heavens were fled. There was no man at this time. No man. We read in the book of Jeremiah, brothers and sisters. There was no man at this time. Go ahead and finish. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. For thus have the Lord said, The whole land shall be desolate. Yet will I not make a full end. So he said, although I am doing away with this creation. That's right. And I'm getting rid of it by a flood. It's not going to be the end because I'm going to go ahead and start it over again with a man named Adam. Come on. But when Satan got here and defiled what was here, brothers and sisters, and brought sin down with him, he had to get rid of it. He had to do away with it, brothers and sisters. Let's go to the book of 2 Peter, the third chapter. 2 Peter, the third chapter. I'm going to give you one more look at this beginning, brothers and sisters. The stuff that took place after God created the heaven and the earth. God reveals his wisdom to his servants. Come on. To teach the world the truth of this word, brothers and sisters. This book has to be taught. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Here a little. And there a little. Let's go one last place, Brother Messenger. 
in the New Testament to show the evidence of a pre-Adamic world before mm. Adam. Yes. Second Peter, the third chapter, verses one through eight. Go ahead. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. So, brothers and sisters, that's what we're trying to do on this show. We're trying to stir, stir up, up your consciousness. That's it. Your curiosity. You may not agree with us, brothers and sisters, but I guarantee you, some of you all have never heard what we're speaking on and teaching on today before. Now, whether you agree with us or not, we're reading from this book, and you're going to leave this show, and you're going to say, man, let me go see what Brother Messenger and Black Brother Ice Hyper. read. Let me go read that, that for myself. Mm -hmm. And that's what our job is, is to just knock on the door of your conscience, brothers and sisters. Pique your interest. Whether we are the ones that get inside is irrelevant to us. We just want to do our job. Go ahead, Second Peter. Third, um, three, and two. three and two. Go ahead. That ye may be mindful of the word which was spoken before by holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scopers walking after their own lusts uh -huh. and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. So the fathers have fallen asleep, brothers and sisters. The words were given to our ancestors. And since we've fallen into captivity, into slavery, we don't even know that, the, that we're Israelites anymore. Hmm. We call ourselves African American after two uh, continents, Not brothers and sisters. No nationality. We think that we're African, but they don't claim us, nor do they accept us, brothers and sisters. But we have a long, rich history, and we can show you that how after 70 AD, when the Romans came in Jerusalem and dispersed us into Africa, we eventually, in the 1500s, landed, not landed, but sojourned to the northwest corner of Africa, where the African had a choice. You can send your kinsmen or you can send the stranger that's in your land, but somebody is coming to us on this westerly course. Mm. But I can't blame the African for selling us into slavery. Some who by force did it and some who by choice did it. I can't even change or, or, or charge or blame the, the white man or the Caucasian. I can't blame him. Absolutely not. Because what happened to us was ordained by God and God sent us into slavery, brothers and sisters, because of our disobedience to his word. That's it. On your own, read the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. That's why you don't see us yelling out the white man this and the white man that and he going to hell and all of that. Brothers and sisters, he could not have done what he did to us without permission from God. Say that again. This is a spiritual thing that we're dealing with, brothers and sisters. But God wanted us to be here for his purpose. Check this out. If Satan himself has to go to God and get permission to test you, yes. how can a white man do anything to you without first having to get permission? That's right. Think about that. That's right. Come on now. Or get the go-ahead. Yeah, either way. <laughs> you know, so we're just sharing with you that we not all wrapped up in the racial stuff, brothers and sisters, the white man. The, we're not all wrapped up in that. But we are wrapped up in God, and, and it's more of a spiritual thing than a racial thing as far as what happened to our people. Yes. Somebody had to play the role as the slave. Somebody, Somebody had, had to, to play the role as the slave master, brothers That's and sisters. It. And God chose us at this time to play the role of the slave. But our condition is going to change. Oh, yes, it is. It's going to change. He, so, he, he, he inserted a little... Scapegoat. Little something, little, little something in there to tell us that the first shall be last. And the last, and the last, shall, last be first. shall be first. Man, it's but getting some deep. Some people don't even. Yeah, that's another. It's getting on, deep, Brother go. Messenger. Yes, yeah, sir. So it's let's, getting let's, deep. Let's go. Second Peter 3, where we at? We verse, at verse 5. five. Mm -hmm. For this they willingly are ignorant of. What are they ignorant of, Brother Messenger? That by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Uh huh. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water, 
perish. Now wait a minute, brothers and sisters. The world. I want to share this with you. Everybody know about the flood with Noah. Hmm. So they can't be talking about the flood with Noah, Noah, brothers and sisters. It says right here, for this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Yes. Continue, my brother. But the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But what about a thousand years? Finish reading that to us. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord a thousand years. Yep. And a thousand years as one day. One day to the Lord is as a thousand, a thousand years. years. And a thousand years, years, brothers and sisters, is as one, one day. day. So, if a thousand years is one day, 10% of a thousand is a hundred. Yes. And one day consists of 24 hours. 10% of 24 hours is two hours and 40 minutes. That's it. So we ain't even living two hours and 40 minutes because most of us ain't living to see a hundred brothers and sisters. It just show you how deep God is. Now, let's read about this goat, brother messenger. Come on now. Let's read about this goat. In order to talk about the goat, huh. we must first talk about the reason for the goat. Come on. I know that all of you have heard the term scapegoat before. Well, that term comes from the Bible. It is meant to describe someone or something mm. used to take the blame for something that they are not guilty of, brothers and sisters, or that they didn't do. So let's read about this scapegoat. Let's go to Genesis, the second chapter. Mm -hmm. Genesis, the second chapter, verses 16 through 18. Now, the beginnings of the scapegoat has to start with the commandment of God and sin of Adam. Let's read it. We're going to go through this real quick. Genesis 2, 16 to 18. Go ahead. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. So, brothers and sisters, here we have a commandment by God. Mm -hmm. And the commandment is a law. Anytime he says, I'm commanding you, it is a law, brothers and sisters. So the law is that you may eat of all the trees of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you may not eat. Mm -hmm. You remember, it has to be a law, brothers and sisters, because if they don't do this, they commit sin. And the Bible's definition of sin is a transgression of the law, transgression of the law. So this is a law, brothers and sisters. Let's see if they kept the law, brother messenger. Genesis, the third chapter. Now, the commandment was given to Adam. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> Eve wasn't even here yet. Nope. The commandment was given to Adam before Eve was created. Adam gave the commandment to Eve, told her what to do. That's why it wasn't until Adam disobeyed that sin became established in the earth through man. Yes. Genesis 3, 1 through 6. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Ye have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God that said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So it's clear that she understood what the law was, or that the commandment was. Let's go ahead at verse 5. Go ahead. I mean, verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For God do know that in the day ye eat thereof. Then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. 
And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Wait a minute. What do you mean the tree was good, good for, for food? food? God already told you, don't talk to this being. Mm -hmm. Don't talk to Satan. Don't talk to this fallen angel. He is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Continue, brother. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. Let's go down to verse nine. Go ahead. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? Continue. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. Uh. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Who, brothers and sisters? Who told you that you were naked? Not what told you. If it was a literal snake, he would have said, what told you? But he said, who told you? Because it was a fallen being. Go ahead. Who told you you were naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree where I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shall thy go and dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. So what this means basically, brothers and sisters, is that in the beginning, Satan was able to reveal himself. He was able to reveal himself. He can no longer appear and reveal himself anymore. The only thing that he can do is suggest to you subtly through your flesh and through your emotions things for you to do that you should not be doing. So he can't appear anymore. Verse 15, go ahead. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So brothers and sisters, this now is referring to um, of Jesus, which is the seed of the woman, which represents Israel, brothers and sisters, and he said, "I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put enmity between the woman uh, and her seed and your seed. Who is the seed of Satan? Anybody that's willfully not obeying the statutes and the uh, laws and the commandments of God." Go ahead and continue at verse sixteen. Unto the woman he said. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So that's why things are in the order that they're in, while man is now the head of the household, brothers and sisters. We could have joint leadership in the beginning because we were one flesh. But now man is the head because God ordained man to be the head and woman became the weaker vessel, vessel brothers and sisters. Last verse, verse 21. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. So these coats of skin came from an animal whose blood was shed because of the sin that they committed, brothers and sisters. So the first thing that was killed in God's creation physically was an animal and the skin of the animal was used to cover the private parts of Adam and Eve. Let's go to Leviticus, the 16th chapter. Leviticus, the 16th chapter. Let's read more into the scapegoat, brother messenger. Now we know why the scapegoat had to come into existence and be used and let's read about what how God commanded the scapegoat to be carried out okay Leviticus 16 6 to 10 Leviticus 16 6 to 10 go ahead the scapegoat and Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering which is for himself and make an atonement for himself and for his house so every 
year, brothers and sisters, the high priest had to go into the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And they had to make atonement for themselves and their household and the congregation or the people. And God is telling him what he wants him to do. Verse 7, go ahead. And he shall take the two goats. And present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Uh -huh. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats. One lot for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. So here it is, brothers and sisters. Scapegoat. Scapegoat, brothers and sisters. Let's see what the scapegoat is for. Continue reading now, 9 and 10. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell. And offer him for a sin offering. So the scapegoat is to be offered, offered for, for a sin, sin offering. Go ahead, my brother. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. So here it is. And let me just make sure that I'm clear. Maybe I misspoke on what I just said. But the scapegoat is the goat that the sins of the people were on and they let the scapegoat go into the wilderness brothers and sisters carrying the sin away from the camp let's go ahead and continue reading at verse 9 through 15 go ahead 9 let's, we just read uh, 10 okay go ahead continue 11. 11 and Aaron shall bring the bullock of sin of the sin offering which is for himself and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house and shall kill the bullock of the sin offerings, which is for himself. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord and his hands full of sweet incense beaten small and bring it within the veil. So here we have a veil. I want you to keep your mind on the veil, brothers and sisters, because there was a purpose for the, the veil. veil. We're going to get to that in a moment. Let's go 15 through 22. Go ahead. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering. That is for the people. I'm sorry, brother messenger. I got to read this. I got to read this. I'm sorry, guys. This is too important to pass up. Remember, we talked about the veil, brothers and sisters. Woo. Let's go to 14, then 15. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. The veil was also used to sprinkle the blood also, brothers and sisters, of the goat and the lamb and the bulls, brothers and sisters. And it was their process of taking away the sin. The animal was the sacrificial right animal for sin let's go ahead and um 15. i th think we were doing 15 through 22 go ahead then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil there's that veil and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat before the mercy seat and he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanliness of the children of Israel and because of their transgression and all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of the, their uncleanliness. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place. So I don't want nobody but Aaron up in here when he make an atonement. Go ahead. Until he come out. And have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before the Lord and make an atonement for it. And shall take the blood of the bullock and the blood of the goat and put it upon the horn of the altar round about. And he shall sprinkle of the blood upon it with his finger seven times and cleanse it. For the sake of time, brother messenger, let's go straight to 22. Go ahead. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto the land not inhabited. And he shall let the goat into the wilderness. So the scapegoat was released, brothers and sisters. 
So the Lord is showing you, brothers and sisters, that the animal at that time was used to cover the sin, mm. to take it away. Absolutely. But the scapegoat represented someone yes. who was coming to take the sin mm. Away, okay. brothers and sisters. Come on now, we talk. Because see, we went from the scapegoat, brother messenger. Now we got to go to the lamb. lamb. We went from the scapegoat. Now we got to go to the lamb. Let's go to Revelations, the 12th chapter. Let's go back there. Come on. Let's go back to the book of Revelations and see what else John saw as it was revealed to him Let's by go. Jesus. Let's go. We call John the revelator, brothers and sisters. <laughs> but... The book of Revelation starts off by saying the revelation of Jesus Christ. So this was given to John, brothers and sisters. Revelations 12, 10 through 11. We read about the scapegoat which led us to the lamb. Mm. So let's go ahead and talk about the lamb of God, brother messenger. Revelations 12, 10 through 11. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accused of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. So here it is, the blood of, of the, the lamb, lamb, brothers and sisters. The scapegoat led to the lamb. Now we read about the scapegoat in the book of Leviticus, right? Mm -hmm. So now let's go ahead and keep this thing on and let's talk about this lamb a little bit more in detail. Revelations 13, 1 verse 8, when Adam sinned against God hmm. at the very beginning, Jesus knew he had to die. This is why the book of Revelation says that the lamb was slain from the beginning of the world, brothers and sisters. Now, a lot of people say, well, black eyes, well, God already knew that Adam was going to sin. That's why I said that the lamb was going to be slain from the beginning of the world or the foundation of the world. Well, no, brothers and sisters, that wasn't the case. The case was man or the foundation or the beginning of the world started with man. So when he messed up at the foundation and in the beginning, the lamb was already slain. Mm. Let's read it, Brother Messenger. Revelations 13 and 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So the man of sin is going to come, brothers and sisters. He's going to look like a righteous man. He's going to look like the man to be followed. But those who are aware of who God is. And who Jesus is. And what his statutes, laws and commandments are. And what the prophecy is. We're already going to know not to go after this man. Absolutely. But the majority of the world is going to be convinced. That this is he who the Bible prophesied will come. So it says. The ones whose names was not written, written in, in the, the book, book of the life. lamb. Of life of the lamb. Who was slain for the foundation of the world went after this man. But our key point that we want to bring out, out of this is that the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. And that's why, because the foundation of the world was when man was created. And that's when man sinned on his first 